Hey everyone, this isn't a Throwback Thursday video or a travel video. I'm going to show you the apps that I use for Japanese language learning, travel, and for photography. The first thing you'll notice on my screen is that my apps are set to Japanese. The biggest thing you can do if you're learning a language is just set your phone to that language. It forces yourself to kind of get used to using it day in and day out and to seeing it. There may be times where you don't understand what's going on. That's okay. You can use a dictionary if you need to. I will say if you're not 100% comfortable with the language, keep it to English if that's the case. If you don't feel comfortable getting important notifications and changing important settings on your phone, it's always really quick to change it. I'm just going to settings. This icon is just general settings, and you can change、uh, language and region and just change it in there. So, from there, the first app I want to show you is a dictionary app. There are so many different Japanese dictionary apps, they're all over the place, but the one I use is Midori. And honestly, if you use another app, it'll probably be the same. I want to say this video is not sponsored by anyone, these are just the apps that I use. The first thing you'll notice when you use this app, there are these different options down at the bottom. There's a keyword, you can choose by radical if you're looking for a specific kanji, or I I don't know how this works. I think it has to do with the different radicals again, but、I'm, it's a system that I'm not familiar with. And then there's handwriting. You can also type in hiragana or romaji. You type in benkyo, it transliterates it to the hiragana for you. You go into the word and you can see these example sentences.、Uh, this app does work in English, by the way, because my phone is set to Japanese. All the categories are going to be shown in Japanese. But they have sentence examples, it goes into depth on the kanji in the word, it shows you phrases that have the word in it, it'll even show you the conjugations. Again, the conjugations are in Japanese, but in English it'll be in English if your phone's set to that. The next app I want to show you is not an app you're going to open every day, but it's something you might use every day if you communicate in Japanese. It's called Maze. Now, it is a handwriting keyword. If you go into the app, it'll just show you how to install it. It'll Pretty sure they have an English version of this as well. I'll go back into the dictionary to show you the keyword. This keyword is accessible from everywhere. So you just go into there and just handwrite. It is the most accurate handwriting app I've seen. You can even do kanji and see how I just kind of did a little sloppy writing and it still recognized it. That is definitely one of my favorite apps. Use. Another fun one for beginners is t o p t o t l e for Japanese language learning. The first thing you see are all these categories for different、uh, terms. So, like, say, you know, you're at Customs and Immigration and they're having, you're having trouble communicating, maybe, and you just want to say, like, oh, I'm here on vacation. Kyuka dekimashita. Kyuka dekimashita. It'll、uh, pronounce it for you. Then, if you hit this record button at the bottom, you can try it for yourself. Save it. So then you can listen and compare. And you can use that to help your own language learning to see, like, oh, this is a change I need to make to pronounce this better. You can even search. So say, like, oh, I need to know how to order something. So you just type in order. Oh, I like to order something. There you go. If you don't feel comfortable repeating it, you can just tap it, play it, the person will understand. And then you can go into here, you can save favorites and recordings. If you don't like the recording, just swipe and it deletes it. For travel in Japan, I use、uh, this app on the top left. It's called Norikai Online. They do have an English version. The English version, I believe, does cost a few dollars. So if you don't want to pay, you can actually use Google Maps in Japan to get around. It's perfectly fine. But Norikai Online, the, this one and Navi Time, I believe. Navi Time is probably more popular. They're just dedicated Japanese transit apps. So you just type in where you want to go from, where you want to go to, where you want to go from. Just hit search, and it'll show you all the different. Ways that you can do that. Here's the list. 
Um, this first one, it says it's the fastest and the most fun. This one says it's the cheapest, but it also has a transfer. It, it'll show you which platform that you'll arrive. If you pay for premium, it'll even show you which car of the train to get on so that you can get directly to the stairs or to just transfer across the platform to whichever train. <laughs> it's, it's very in-depth. It's down to the minute. It'll give you warnings too if there's been an accident or something on the line that you're gonna take. So it'll say like, oh, this train might be delayed because there's an accident. Another app that you aren't necessarily gonna open every day and it only works if you have bought your iPhone in Japan, it's the Suica app. It also does not come in English. You can load an actual Suica card. These are the touchless payment system cards that are used everywhere in Japan, except for maybe like super countryside areas. They are for paying for your train ticket. You can also use them to pay for food at the convenience store. And you just seriously just like take the phone tap it and it just lets you in and it calculates it all for you um, and you can charge it from this app. Super convenient if you don't have a phone or a Apple Watch that you bought in Japan you can just get an actual card from the card kiosk at the station. Even the card itself is super convenient. Highly recommended. That's it for travel. Let's go ahead and look at photography now. The most recent app I've bought I really enjoyed this is called Pico. Don't laugh. This is my setup. <laughs> I'm using to record this video. You can go in here and the first one is free, but they have all these different like film packs and these are, they're like filters kind of for taking the photo. But the nice thing about this app is that it applies the filter as you're taking the photo. You can slide to set the brightness, tap to focus, that's it. And then you just take the photo. Another one I highly recommend is Filmborn. Um, it's a little bit like Visco Cam, but I like the controls a little bit better. Up on the top, there's like that red area. Those are where it's the picture's overexposed, so you can actually adjust for that. Hardly ever use the built-in camera just because it's not as quickly accessible. I will just use the phone camera and then go into here, pick a picture, and go in and edit it. So then you can apply these different filters and they emulate very popular rolls of film. The top three and bottom three are different colors from Fujifilm and Kodak, and then the middle row is black and white from Belford. Then you can go through, adjust the brightness, contrast, whatnot. The thing I love about this app the most is it also adjusts the vertical and horizontal skew, which are things that are not found in Visco. And then you can save it directly to the photo. They are not, they are non-destructive edits, so you can always go back or you can just save a new copy. If you think of any friends that are going to Japan that might be able to benefit from this video, go ahead and share this with them. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. If you want to see more from Shintaro and I, Shintaro wasn't in today's episode, but he shows up. Please give us a subscribe. We would really appreciate that as well. And in the comments, if you have any other suggestions for apps that you might know about, I would love to hear it. That'll be it for today's episode, so thanks for watching.